in the name of Jesus, who with a love as high as the heavens reaches down to find us, even in the dust. Amen. Dust and ashes. As today is Ash Wednesday, the day in the church year when many Christians are marked around, are in, many Christians around the world are marked with ashes on their foreheads. The priests and pastors look them in the eye and declares, you are dust. And to dust you shall return. Dust and ashes. During this year's Lenten season, our sermons will be exploring the theme of God's enormous love, the hugeness of his mercy and his compassion. In the Old Testament, when God personally passed by Moses on the mountain, he proclaimed his divine name. Yahweh, Yahweh, a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in merciful love. In the Psalms, the Old Testament worshipers exalted, as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love for those who fear him. And in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul marvels that though we, we and all mankind were dead in trespasses and sins, there is hope because, as Paul writes, God is rich in mercy. The enormity of God's love and mercy drove Paul to his knees in prayer, fervently asking that others too might have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. And that is my prayer for us this Lenten season. And this will be our focus. We will examine from several angles just how rich How huge, how deep, how broad, how high God's love for us is in Jesus Christ. Now you could say it has become a a cliche, perhaps an empty sounding bumper sticker slogan to say, God loves you. Jesus loves you. But there's nothing empty or cliched about the living God and the ways that he has loved us and continues to love us and will love us forever. Today we reflect on how high that love is as he reaches down into the dust, literally, to have us and to help us. The scripture for this Ash Wednesday sermon comes out from the account of the creation and fall. The fall of our first parents in the Garden of Eden, recorded in Genesis chapter 2 and chapter 3. From handfuls of dust and dirt, God made a living human being, created in his own image. He took dust and he breathed into it the breath of life. And that dust became human. But because of human rebellion and sin, because of the disobedience of Adam and Eve, and you and me, God's decree is that Adam and every other human must die. We must return to the dust and the dirt from which God formed us. Every one of us will die, must die, unless Jesus returns first. Every one of us will return to dust or ashes such as those who are cremated. Every one of us must return to the ground 
That is a vital truth, a central truth to our world and our human race. It's uncontroversial. It's pretty self-evident. And yet, how rare is it to be directly told, you are dust, and to dust you will return. Ash Wednesday is sobering. It's sobering for parents to see ashes traced on the foreheads of their children. And to hear those words addressed to them individually, remember you are dust, and to dust you will return. But it's true. True for each and every one of us. This dose of reality summons us to repentance and also to joy. To joy because as a Christian, I know Jesus, the mighty Savior, has won for me the resurrection and eternal life. But these blunt words and these ashes also summon us to repentance. My sin grieves my God. My sin has brought wretchedness and death into God's creation, into my own life, into the lives of others. Dust and ashes. What a thing for Adam and Eve to have to endure. They had a perfect world right before them, and yet they chose sin and had to deal with the consequences. The consequences for themselves, to each other, to the children after them. What a result they had to take in. Did they have the stomach to continue to eat? And if not, how long would they fast for? Our lesson from the book of Genesis doesn't mention if Adam and Eve repented to each other but they must have, for they had to embrace the world together. They didn't have time to hold grudges, and it would not have been the loving thing to do. When I think of love, I think of positive emotions. I think of a chemistry that brings people together to move forward with a great hope. But relationships have their mistakes don't they? Our mistakes have people, mistakes with people we care about and mistakes with a God who created us. Through embracing the relationships with the people we care for, we learn that repentance isn't always a joyful thing. But it does set us all on a path for a greater future a stronger future. To refuse to repent is to break up a relationship. To refuse to repent is to go into hiding. But in facing our brokenness, we don't have to remain burdened with our guilt. We don't have to remain lost in our depravity. Dust and ashes. Throughout the Bible, dust and the ashes are associated with repentance. Job himself repented in dust and ashes. After Jerusalem was destroyed, he was one of the few that had remained. And he and his friends sat down and poured dust on their heads. The prophet Joel called the people to repent of their sins as the people were living in famine, and there wasn't even an animal sacrifice to offer to the Lord. They did not have the resources to offer God what God had asked of them. And in the story of Jonah, after the king of Nineveh listened to Jonah, he sat down in piles of ashes. Dust and ashes convey Repentance, humility, and mourning over sin. And why dust? Why ashes? What is dust and what are ashes? Dust and ashes are the stuff that are of utter 
destruction, nothingness, and worthlessness. All that stood, all that was once built up, all that was seemingly strong and secure and even magnificent, magnificent, great, is torn down, burned down, and destroyed. Think of a mushroom cloud of dust and ashes after an atomic bomb goes off. Whatever was in its path is now dust and ash. Think of the billowing waves of dust and ash from the twin towers of the World Trade Center. Or the dusty rumble and ashes of Jerusalem's charred ruins when God sent the armies of Babylon against it. And it will be the same with cities and buildings sooner or later as no empire lasts forever. What of the millions and what of the millions of human beings who preceded us in this world? Where are they now? What has become of them? Kings and queens, butlers and beggars, all of them are dust and ashes. In the Old Testament, God calls cities and nations to repent, to turn to the Lord for mercy. And his prophets warn them. Such as Isaiah who declared the high fortifications of God's walls will bring down, lay low, and cast to the ground, to the dust. And again, he writes, you will be brought low. From the dust of the earth, you shall speak. From the dust, your speech will be brought, will be bowed down. Your voice shall come from the ground with the voice of a ghost. And from the dust of your speech, shall whisper. <clears throat> Men had defied God and turned away from him, oppressed others and exalted themselves. They refused to acknowledge their sin, to humble themselves and seek God's mercy and help. And so God declared their end. Dust and ashes. He warned them and he threatened them and it was much like the sentence that was pronounced upon Adam. You are dust and to dust you will return. This is God's sober sentence pronounced to us today. You are dust, and to dust you will return. But notice this also, dear friends, in Jesus Christ, the sober reminder quoted to you on this Ash Wednesday. Remember the verses before this in the book of Genesis. God said to Adam, by the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you are taken. For you are dust, and to dust you will return. So yes, it is true that because of sin, you and I must return to dust. But there is a God who reaches down into the dust and give us life. Behold, the high, high God reaching down in the dirt on the sixth day, on the sixth day of creation. Behold, God's heart beating with excitement and joy as he formed our first father. Adam had nothing, was nothing, deserved nothing. He was just dirt. But God, in his love, made him. He breathed into him, raised him up from the dust to live under God, to know God, to enjoy God, just as God enjoyed Adam and Eve. God gave them every good thing, and every thing was for their good. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you are dust, and to dust you will return. 
But remember, long ago, at the beginning, God took us from the ground, raised us from the dust, enlivened us with his divine breath and love. And he is still this God for you. He helps his people. In any low and desperate situation, he is the God who has heard from Hannah's prayer for a child. And she rejoiced and said, There is none holy like the Lord, for there is none besides you. Raises up the poor from the dust, and he lifts lifts the needy from the ash of heat. Again, you are dust, and you will return to the dust. But God's high love will preserve you forever. God will one day rage down into the dust again, into your grave, into your dust, and he will raise you up, your body. In love, he will shape your dust. In love, he will breathe into your lifeless corpse the breath of life. And love, he will reach down and draw you up to share the joy of Jesus' own resurrection. We who are dust will share in Jesus' glory and life. All because Jesus set aside his glory and laid down his life to share in our dust and in our death. The one who created us from the dust was Christ crucified because of hate. The one who created us from the dust in love staggered and fell into the dust, pressed down under the weight of the cross he carried. The one who created us from the dust in love hung on the cross in pain and shame and nakedness, covered only in dust and blood. The one who created us from the dust in love poured out his blood for those who who would know him not. And his blood ran down his face, his arms, his side, his legs, dripped down into the dust below. And from that dust, the blood cries out. From that dust, his blood speaks out in love. Father, forgive them. Pardon them. Restore them. Resurrect them. For I have shed my blood for the forgiveness of of their sins. Dear friends, God loves you. God's love for you is so high that he reaches down into the dust to help you, to help you. Back in the first week of the world, when God scooped up that dirt, he looked ahead to the resurrection. As God scooped up that dirt, to form Adam. He knew that the day would come when he would do this for Adam once again and for all his children and for you. As God scooped up that dirt for Adam, he also knew that it would cost the lifeblood of his divine son. Behold, his great love for you even then. And so the father bent down and the son at his side, creating with him, reaching out into the dirt so that he might have you, so that he might help you, so that he might love you. May he grant you true repentance and full joy in his love this Lent. May he give you confidence that whatever comes our way, that his high love will lift up from the ash heap and one day Rise you from the dust. Let me close this sermon with the words from Psalm 103. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love to those who fear him. As the Father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame, and he remembers that we are dust. Amen.